There is an innate intelligence in right. every cell. You don't have to teach the cell what its job is. It knows what organ it's in. It, that organ knows what system it plays a part in. The entire organism functions says a bunch of cells, as you said, and they know they already know what to do. Just a little taster of what is coming up on the show. But first, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel and also tell your friends and family about this podcast. Please let us know in the comments if you would like to hear any particular topic in relation to sleep or health, then I will create a show especially for you just for asking the question. So let's get on with the show. everybody and you are so welcome back to the empowering family health I am really excited about this episode because in the house we have an incredible incredible guest his name is Reed Davis and before I bring Reed in I'm going to read you out his amazing bio listen to this folks Reed Davis he's a board certified holistic health practitioner and certified nutritional therapist he is an expert in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine. He is the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, and we'll be talking about that today, and the FDN certification course as well. Uh, and he has over 4,000 graduates in that program, and this program is in 50 countries. Wow. Reed has served as a health director at a wellness center in Southern California for over 10 years, and with over 10,000 clients, is known as one of the most experienced clinicians in his field. Reed serves on the advisory board of the American Natural Wellness Coaches Board and the American Association of Natural Wellness Coaches. Oh my God, that is a handful. <laughs> so we have an experienced guy in the house. Reed, come on in and say hello. You're very welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I really love your show and uh, empowerment is what it's all about. You want to give people control of their health because God knows that uh, other ones, other people would like to have that control, but we got to keep it in our own hands, right? Yeah, absolutely. I loved it. And this is what really attracted me to you, Reed, as well, you know, with the work that you're doing and, you know, the field that you're working in, because, you know, when it comes to our health, you know, we can't really afford to wait until we're sick. And that's what an awful lot of people are doing. And true no fault of their own, there's lots of things in our environment that, you know, is causing us to be sick. But I think it's really important that we are responsible for our health and what we can do to keep us healthy and well and living with a good quality of life. So, Reid, let's dive in and just tell us what is functional medicine? Functional medicine is not conventional medicine in that it looks for the underlying causes and conditions to the best of its ability. And so I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a health coach and FDN practitioner. We call it functional diagnostic nutrition. That's the name of what I develop. So I'd love to give you a little bit of history if I could, so it would put this all in perspective. I was an environmentalist and conservationist uh, working to save the whole planet, air birds, water trees, bees, and so on. And uh, then in the late 90s, I started to turn my attention to people. I started wondering, as I saw dead animals and bodies of water and plant life, you know, I, I thought, what about us? What about people, including me? You know, I was getting older and I, I didn't want anything to sneak up on me. And things will sneak up on you if you don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. So I changed gears a little bit. I went to work in a wellness center in Southern California. And I was responsible for running the place eventually. And the owner said that I could go to this nutrition program with her and work on her patients in between my classes, which is an amazing opportunity. And so I jumped on that. The only price was I had to do her homework as well as my own going through that program so so i learned double <laughs> and uh got my you know nutritional uh therapy certification through that but more importantly the most important thing is i could list all my credentials that i've received since then is i ran more lab work than anybody and i'm talking about alternative lab work i'm talking about the people coming to our clinic were 
not interested in conventional medicine, just taking pills for the symptoms. And they'd actually been given the runaround much of the time. Some had seen six or eight or nine or 10 mm -hmm. doctors or practitioners, and they weren't better yet. Now, me personally, I was very interested, but I'd never really been to the doctor before. I'd never been sick. I had some dental work and some sports injuries, a couple of motorcycle spills, but I didn't know how bad the medical system was. And when I heard people telling me they've been to 10 practitioners yeah. and weren't better, I just figured they've been getting ripped off. Well, you've been ripped off then. If you, you, and how much have you spent? Thousands and thousands of dollars on this and that and everything else. So I determined, matter of fact, I was up riding my motorcycle one day in the desert of Southern California, which is my hobby, and I love that. Um, and I was just thinking about the poor folks back at the office, and I said, you know what? Damn it, I'm going to be the last person they need to see. And that was in about the year 2000. I, I uh, just dedicated my life to helping people and uh, rather than the planet, which was my previous career. Mm. And so I discovered a lot of things by running those labs. I just was fortunate enough to be able to run the, what they call functional medicine labs. It's alternative medicine, but it's about how you're functioning. Yeah. Nothing crazy about it. It's very scientific. And I, without a medical background, had to study the anatomy, the physiology, the biochemistry. And, and I can go on and on. For 10 years, I worked there running labs and learning and learning and working with people face to face with thousands of people had serious. I called it stuck in the cycle of trial and error. Yeah, and somebody, try, try this and see how it works. And come Yeah, just try it. Just try it. So some guy is trying to sell his products or therapy or whatever it is and you know you spend your money and it doesn't work oh well try something else no there's that's not the solution you're if you're stuck in that cycle of trial and error then you need to break out of it and i can tell you how we'll get get to that but yeah. i just wanted to say my so my background was more i ran more labs than anybody else at the time i was told by some of the labs you do more work than any five doctors put together yeah and i'm not even a doctor yeah, I just had access and I did it. So I made my observations, Joanne, and then I'll, I'll stop for a minute. Um, from the perspective of someone who couldn't just get out a prescription pad. No, I had to run the kind of labs that would tell us what was really wrong and then figure out how to fix it on your own. Again, uh, the conversation started with control over our health. Mm -hmm. I could not figure out how, why those people were putting control of their health in someone else's hands. And I said, it needs to be in their hands and I'm going to help them do it. And that's how I get started. There's so much in that, Reid. And, um, you know, what I loved what you said about how our cells function. And, you know, it's like we have uh, trillions and trillions of cells in our body and they all function. It's like an ecosystem and they all work together in harmony. Well, that's ideally what's supposed to happen, right? Our bodies always work and to work in harmony and to keep us alive and keep us healthy. Like our body knows what to do. And when we start putting medication and look, I think there is a time and a place for the doctors, but that's only when we get sick, when we get to that stage where we need interaction really quickly. But I, I still think, you know, it can be short term. And when I hear people, oh, I'm on these medications for life that I, I just no. I don't know. That doesn't sit with me at all. And um, and we know that medications, there's always it's always blocking something else and it's going to cause I mean, you know, I've read reports where there's been more deaths and, you know, other illnesses as a result of medication. Would I, you know, would you agree with that? <laughs> if I'm Absolutely. I, I agree with everything you just said. You started with the innate intelligence. The body knows what to do. There is an innate intelligence in right. every cell. You don't have to teach the cell what its job is. It knows what the organ it's in that organ knows what system it plays a part in the entire organism function says a bunch of cells as you said and they know they already know what to do yeah and yeah. yet so the the solution of using just medication you know every drug does just sort of block something there are risks there are warnings there are contraindications yes Yes. And a lot of reasons why you don't want to just take medicine for the symptoms. You really want to. And by the way, since I wasn't a physician, I had to look somewhere else. There's no just, uh, oh, here's your diagnosis and here's your prescription. And also, by the way, recognize that some people go to a physician, they get the standard blood work, 
and are told nothing's wrong with you. Yes, I yeah yeah I've I've had that loads of times. Yeah, not not for me personally, but some of my clients. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, yeah. And so, well, but the person knows there is something wrong. And what is it? Well, we don't know. Here's your chill pills. Just just we don't know why what causes that. Well, that's a bunch of baloney, you know. And there is underlying reasons. The Can other I just dispute, say, yeah. well, I I had a client actually read, and this this is how powerful this is, you know, and 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 it's it's so not right. I had a client, and they, they're suffering with um, constipation, blow, and all that sort of gut problems, right? And they went on for years, and they got the bloods done. The doctor said everything's fine, and um, the person came to me and said, "There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine." The doctor said, "I'm fine," and I said, "Well, if you're having all these problems like continuously on and off, then there's something not working in your body." And he said to me, "Well, you're not a doctor. The doctor knows better than you." And uh I, I nearly cringed and I was like, oh, my God, wake up, wake up, wake up. If you're not feeling right, there's something wrong, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned it. You mentioned it was a fella. And, you know, guys tend to care more about their cars, make sure they're working mm. great than they do their own bodies. And sure. women live longer. I think the one reason is they pay attention to their owies, their boo-boos. You know, they 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 hey, something's wrong here. Yeah. And if you get told by anybody, physician or otherwise, that, well, no, there's nothing wrong, you can uh, you, you can dismiss that. There is something. Because I've spent 23 or 4 years now searching for these underlying conditions. We call them upstream. So, and, and I learned where to look. I learned a pattern that's very easy to memorize. And I can give that to you if you want. But um, there's other things I learned, too, about these upstream causal factors. And so I'd be happy to elucidate. Yeah, what's, I mean, what I want to ask you, Reid, is what's it like? Does, I'm a sleep coach myself and lots of people are coming to me. They're tired, they're fatigued. And I say to them, you know, it's it's not the process of sleep. It's what you're doing during the daytime. It's your lifestyle. So. There's so many people that are tired, stressed out, the world we're living in, the amount of toxins in our environment. So what my question to you, Reid, is what do you see is the most common complaint and where do you start with that? What kind of labs would you do or what? where would you start? Funny you should ask because uh, chronic fatigue is certainly one of the problems, but it's just one of a small number. Almost any condition that we would see someone for or you would be a chronic downward spiraling degenerative condition so chronic it's been going on for years mm -hmm. it's getting worse it's downward spiraling and uh it's usually lifestyle related it's something that you're doing that your body's not uh, able to balance and adjust to or adapt to mm -hmm. now that's what we do that's our backyard now if, if it's something where the downward spiral is really contracted that means you're dying you go see a physician because they can save your life. That's not our backyard. So if the downward spiral is so contracted, then the observations we would make with our labs, we don't have time to, to have an effect. You need to get your life saved first. So don't not see a doctor. You know, if you have a lot of pain in your head, well, it could be a brain tumor. That's not me. I'm not a brain tumor guy. But if the pain in your head is caused by inflammation and food sensitivities and other interferences from the environment and there's lots of time to work on it then we're your guy you know we're yes. your backyard that you want to be in so and the labs we would run include saliva urine blood and stool saliva urine blood stool we test the hormones the immune system digestion detoxification energy production and the nervous system now that's makes an acronym called HIDDEN, H-I-D-D-E-N. So hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system. It's so easy to remember. And my, in my 10 years in the clinic, every chronic degenerative downward spiraling condition had one or more of those elements in it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Every one of them, over 10,000 cases. Wow. And so here's the other interesting factor. Not only are these sometimes well hidden, no pun intended, but these hidden things are quite well hidden. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're so far upstream that most physicians wouldn't relate that thing to your skin condition or your migraines or your ADD, ADHD or your sleeplessness yeah. or your irritable bowel syndrome or all of these common 
degenerative downward spiraling conditions. So, be, so again, these causal factors, the hidden stressors and dysfunction, they're way upstream. Here's the other thing. They're having an effect on each other that you can't even measure. That's why I call it metabolic chaos. That's a term that I came up with that just kind of describes. Here, your real problem is this chaos and modern medicine is not designed to sort it all out. Is Modern medicine is designed to pick one thing. Oh, look, it's your thyroid. Oh, look, it's your irritable bell. Oh, look, you have a parasite. So it's called fractionating or- yeah. Separate. And we have all the individual doctors, the immunologist, the cardiologist. Yeah. You nailed it. You nailed it. So when you go to the gastroenterologist for your gut problems and, he, and you say, well, yeah, I'm not sure if this medication is working or not. You know, it might be a little better, but I still have uh, tiredness and fatigue and, you know, my, my mental, I'm not thinking clearly, you know, the mental fog. They say, oh, well, I'm just a general uh, gastroenterologist. For that, you and I've done what I can do. You for that, you go see a neurologist or oh, an endocrinologist. Six months waiting list, yeah, or two years waiting list, maybe if you're lucky. <laughs> so these old boys are passing you around, oh, and yeah. they're doing what they do, and it suits their model of care and their financial model as well. And so, where are you? Where are you? You're stuck in the cycle of trial and error. And in the meantime, you're getting anxiety, you're getting depression, and your mental well-being is going out the door. In the meantime, oh. One of my most famous stories, if you have the time, I don't know how long we get here, but uh, quickly, uh, a lady was coming into our wellness center for chiropractic and acupuncture. And again, we were alternative stuff, some nutrition, counseling. And I could tell one day she was depressed. She was on about her eighth or ninth visit. And, um, and I said, hey, what's wrong? She goes, oh, it's this damn weight. You know, I'm 40 pounds overweight and it's really frustrating me. And happy me, and well, what are we going to do about Oh, she didn't want to hear that. She said, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. I'm on this medication for the hives, for skin patches. You know, uh, I'm on this medication for the hives, and it makes me fat. And I've been on it for two years. And this 40 pounds is just really frustrating. And before I could say the next word, she says, and you know, Reed, I was at the doctor the other day for a checkup, and I, I told the doctor how frustrated I am with this extra weight. And he said to me, she said, oh, no, lady, you can be fat or you can have the hives. Take your pig. Um, and and when she said, well, that's very depressing. He said, I'll be happy to write your prescription for antidepressants. Talk about taking your power away. Oh, my God. And when I so I'm like looking at her going, oh, I understand why you look so sad today. Um. I said, well, why didn't you ever find out why you get the hives? And what? She, her head snapped around. I thought she wouldn't need her chiropractor that day. She, you know, <laughs> what? What do you mean? I said, yeah, you could maybe find out why you get the hives. You're sensitive to something. It's caused, something's causing the hives. She'd never even entertained the idea before yeah. through standard medicine. Yeah. So long story short, Within a couple of weeks of running some labs, getting her results, changing her lifestyle, mostly diet, she was off the medication, no oh, more hives, oh. and within two more weeks, she was losing weight, working out to a sweat, and taking hot showers. She told me then, I haven't had a hot shower worked out to a sweat in two years, because even on the meds, I, it gave me the hives. Oh, that's but, so moving. That really is. It's life changing. Now I have story after story after story. Oh. In, in Ten years of clinical experience. You can imagine the number of successes like that we had that seemed quite miraculous, but it's actually very simple. If you look for the underlying cause, you I might really get that. I re I really get that. It can be so simple, and like like what you said, you asked her that very powerful question: What's causing the hives? That's something that we don't we 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 think we're sick. We need a medicine to to fix us, and then you know if the doctor says you need it for life, we we just accept that. We don't question. We never question the doctor. Um, I don't know many of my clients and and myself up to up to a time felt very intimidated by doctors. You're only given ten minutes in a doctor's office. How the hell can they take your history and know what's going on? You know, they're just looking at the symptoms, literally. So we've got to really um, entertain or try on the idea that we can, you know, ask ourselves these questions, what's causing it? 
And the idea that we can possibly, we can't say cure, but we can possibly make our bodies work better or give our bodies the ingredients that our body can do the work for us because our bodies are so freaking intelligent. I mean, I've heard miracle stories and like it, it makes sense on a biological level. You know, it really makes sense how our body can do this. You talked about food sensitivity and um, a lot of people you know, there's, you know, there's lots of toxins in our foods these days and they're, they're not very nutritionally dense. And, you know, can you talk to us about food sensitivities and intolerance as well? What's the difference? And a lot of people are suffering with that and gut health. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can talk a lot about that. Uh, we can use a <laughs> whole show on that easily. But uh, simply, foods of the labs that we run, remember I said we run labs. We run five labs on every person. That's the price of admission to really sort out your metabolic chaos is you got to be serious about looking for it. So unfortunately, that means people have to get pretty darn sick or symptomatic before they come to us. Mm. I would love it if everyone would just say, I feel pretty good, but I want to get checked out. That's yeah. not real common. So people come with these symptoms. Yeah. And we run five labs. One of them is a food sensitivity or oral intolerance, oral intolerance testing. It's not the same as allergy testing. Mm. Uh, there's the way the immune system works. There's immunoglobulins. They're there to defend and help you um, ward off evil, you know, so mm. to speak. Like if you're allergic to a dog, you would know it because the dog dander, you know, you breathe it in. And next thing you know, you're producing histamine. Yeah. And that makes your eyes water and you sneeze and you get itchy skin and you get, you know, dog. There's a dog in here somewhere, you know, you get like that. Well, that's an obvious IgE reaction, we call it. There's some that are much more subtle and they take maybe up to 72 hours to have some kind of effect. And it can be anything from migraines to achy joints to um, bowel movement problems, just all kinds of things, poor sleep, you name it. So one of the contributors to metabolic chaos is foods that you're not supposed to be eating. And it isn't just the uh, pesticides and herbicides and rodenticides and uh, all the other things. It's not the chemicals on the food. Those are bad enough. Yeah, They cause lots of metabolic chaos. But the food itself could be just not right for you at this time. Your, your immune system just sees it as an offender. Yeah. You know, it might think, oh, that's mold or mildew, you know, or or um, some kind of uh, uh, bug, you know, bacteria. Or it kind of responds the same way with an immune reaction, not IgE. You don't immediately start uh, sneezing and sniffling and eyes watering, but it's more subtle. It's more insidious. You know, it's actually um, a worse thing. So that's another kind of intolerance. Yeah, yeah, and it can be very involves, as well, so you wouldn't really notice any major upsets. It, it's hard to determine because the symptoms are coming two, three days after you eat the food. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or it could be also exposure. Now, now you're opening up a whole new sort of can of worms. What else could I be sensitive to? And so, people we do the food sensitivity test realize, hey, what I eat matters. That's a good thing to be observant, to be aware. You actually become more aware, a, a more aware, conscious person. Now that would lean over into household care products. What are you cleaning your bathroom and your clothes with and things like that? It also would lean into, what about my personal care products? What are you shampooing your hair? Well, I don't have that problem. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know like, it, it, what am I washing? What am I spraying? What am I doing? So all of these things, you can get the same kind of immune response. And we're all spending so much time indoors as well, Reid. And and the air, oh. it's very, it's more polluted indoors than it is outdoors. And yes. we're on lockdown. Oh. And we've been, I don't want to talk about that. But <laughs> well, it, it's, it, it really does matter. So see, so the more conscious, conscientious we get, the more self-aware we become, we start to realize, well, food matters. Well, so does, uh, I'll give you an example. My wife wants new draperies. We were down at a condo in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and uh, and we really like the roll-up kind of blinds they have there versus what we have now. And she wants new, they're kind of old anyway. So, so but I'm concerned about, well, what about the outgassing of the chemicals going to come off of this 
you know, part of it's plastic, some of it's fabric, some of it's whatever. And I know it's going to be outgassing. So I'm going to have to buy two new air purifiers just to handle the air purification around two new sets um, of new new window treatments. You feel yeah, me on yeah. that? So you, you but you got to be so I'm OK with getting this stuff, but I'm going to have to mediate for it, including probably some personal detoxification. But no, yeah. after a few months. These yeah. things uh, get outgas, and yeah. and they're okay after that. It's not forever. So a new a new sofa. Let's say you get a new. Uh, what do you call sofa over there? Is it chest yeah, couches, or? a couch or a sofa? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah couches. So you actually should leave it out in the in the back porch for a couple of months to let it outgas, then bring it in the house. You know, yeah. technically speaking. So there's a lot going on with reducing carpets. That's another big one. Carpets. Yeah, metabolic chaos. New paint. She wants to paint. I, I say the paint's fine. I like old paint, you know. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, it's not any arguments. We just discuss these things. It's, you know, like and where's the where's the balance, of course. But um, but I yeah, really agree with that. yeah, that's uh, that's really important. I have an air pure. I have one here, a big. Uh, uh, it's just a whole house, and I, it does uh, a UV. I have a UV setting on it as well for all of that. Really doing a big clean, and um, the air, the water, always have a water filter. I have a really good water filter in the house. There's so much shite in the water that we're drinking, and we need we need water for hydration and so many other sure. processes in the body. That's another big one. But yeah, we can't eliminate everything, but we can do a lot to reduce it and to be aware, as you say, Reed, as well. Yes, well, I'll just say that what you're bringing up for me is our protocols. So I gave you the hidden stressors and dysfunctions that are hidden upstream. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that we test five different labs. We test for a lot of things. And we also know where to look for the interactions between them. Those aren't singly measurable, and it's something not even considered by most Western medicine. They just don't look for this stuff. And they don't consider that even your some of your best functional medicine practitioners aren't really aware of all the interactions between causal factors. Yeah. On some of my presentations where I have uh, slides and things, I have some great uh, visuals, graphics to illustrate this, how it works. Now, the next question is, okay, Reed, you just showed me five ways I need to improve myself, my body, whether it's hormones, uh, get those balanced, the immune system, quiet that thing down. You know, and the digestion, oh, you've got to improve it so you actually get all the nutrients out of the food and assimilate those into your body. D detoxification, we measure liver function, for instance. Oh, yeah, it's congested. You're not really purifying your body naturally the way you were designed to do. Liver is reflective of the all the detoxification organs. So I just gave you this constellation of, here's the word, healing opportunities. Mm, areas that you healing opportunities, areas you can improve. And no one's ever shown people this stuff. It's mm -hmm. just here, take this medication for the symptoms or even just taking supplements for the systems. And you could work at a low level that's helpful, but this is going way upstream. And what am I gonna do about it, Reed? Thank you, you just showed me what's wrong with me, where I can improve. Now, what do I do? Yeah. Well, there's no prescription pad for this. The, the prescription, if you want to use that term, is new habits, new lifestyle, new awareness, new conscientiousness about your epigenetic influences. That what's called the epigenome. Yeah. So that's your whole world. That's everything around you, including the way you think and your spirituality and and you know being being a, everything from having a purpose in life, which is very uh, to me emancipating, and then also the food and the uh, love, rest love, that you get and the that exercise. Yeah, it's... So So my other acronym, I gave you H-I-D-D-E-N. Yeah, oh, I love these acronyms. <laughs> now, so the solution, now what do I do? D-R-E-S-S, -S, spells dress. We call it dress for health success. And it's diet. So we, we metabolically type everyone so we know their genetic requirements. So eat according to your genetics, diet. The R is rest, obviously, and not just good sleep, but rest. You can rest your emotions during the day. You can do breathing. You can go lay down. Behind this screen here is my day bed, so I can take naps if I want to. I have because one over here. 
<laughs> hey, you know what? There's nothing like a five minute power nap, you know? Yeah. So diet, I don't say sleep. I go rest. Yeah. Then exercise, D-R-E. Exercise goes without saying. Um, and then the two S's are stress reduction or management and mm. supplementation. Mm. So now on that, I don't have my own brand, but I know a lot about them. And I know how to use them properly and effectively, and safely. But the stress reduction part is also really huge. And even like food sensitivities, they're part of diet, but they're also part of stress reduction. They're part of reducing the load on the body. So in a sense, they're just one more contributor to metabolic chaos that you must remove. Yeah. As, and so you're getting, you're getting two, two areas for for your money there, you know, a lot of bang for your buck on a food sensitivity test. And then we also test for parasites, bacteria, funguses, viruses even, although that topic's pretty worn out these last couple of years. Yeah, that's a big uh, one. Mm. Yeah, so we could, you know, sometime, but the, the people do have uh, fungus and uh, parasites and bacteria. At least they have a dysbiosis. And you you know this, you have more bacteria cells in your body than your own cells yeah i was going to ask you about the microbiome yeah that's an important it's point. about 20 times as many cells as your own cells at least 15 i think so it's trillions of bacteria and it needs to be in balance it needs to be in balance so so even if it's we test for that we test for food sensitivities we test for the uh, microbiome we test for the hormones the immune and digestion as i said but the solution is always What's going to put the client in control? Yeah. What are the habits that they can own and make part of their world and life, that, what we call the epigenome, so that they have more control? Now, look, you can still get whacked with something or hit by a bus, you know, but you're at least going to be happy when it <laughs> And you may recover a lot quicker. And, you know, if you have less stress, you have more stress resilience because the stress thing, Reed, is huge. And, like, stress is, like, it's physical stress, it's emotional stress, it's chemical stress. And even when you were talking about the food sensitivities and what have you, and you, you spoke about the histamine earlier on, and histamine is one of those um, that keeps us awake. It's, it's one of the, the neurotransmitters that actually yeah. keeps us awake, the histamine. And, you know, if people are having, the, obviously, if you're itching and scratching and all this, it's going, you're not going to be able to sleep. But the histamine is going to keep you awake as well. So like all these um, byproducts that the body is, and it's, the body is just trying to save us or do its job or whatever, but it's upset and everything is causing a chaotic environment, as you say, and it's it's in disharmony. And that's going to cause us not to be able to sleep at nighttime. And if we're not sleeping, we're not detoxifying. We've heard a lot about the brain you know, the toxins in the brain and, you know, the, the better amyloid has been associated with, with, with Alzheimer's and all that. That's a whole other story. But there's so much detoxification. The liver is a big one, as you say, and that, that happens quite a lot, especially in the earlier part of the night. That's detoxifying. That's really important. So like we need to be able to sleep to detoxify and, and, and getting us ready for the next day. And so many other processes, the immune system. Oh, I, mean, I could talk about that forever, but yeah. it all has an effect. It all has every, an every cell every cell is affected by a good night's sleep and generally on the improvement side right and so every cell the cells are part of organs and those are part of systems so the detoxification system is definitely enhanced but so is your immune system the musculoskeletal system mm -hmm. the brain you know there's a lot of and that's one of our habits if you remember so d-r-e-s-s -S, diet rest and sometimes that's a person's main complaint as you said but um, we, we don't, in FDN, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, we are, are um, always taking the 30,000 foot view. It's almost like it doesn't matter what your problem is. Here's how you have to live. And it'll sort it all out, the testing. And yeah. uh, the testing is remarkable. You mentioned histamine. And I wanted to say for the folks that your body makes the counter-regulatory agent for Histamine, your body makes it. It's called yep. diamine oxidase or DAO. Yep. We have a test. It's a simple uh, finger stick. You don't have to get a blood draw. You can get a kit shipped to you. You uh, just prick your finger with a little thing and you drip out some blood onto a blotter and let it dry and send it to the lab. And they'll tell you your histamine, your DAO, and the histamine to DAO ratio. So that's very important to know. Where do you think DAO is made? 
It's made in the gut. It's made in the crypts between the villi. So you know the villi, the little thing. So in the crypt is where this DAO is made, and it counteracts histamine. So you have a built-in natural counteract for histamine. Now, it doesn't mean go eat a bunch of foods with histamine because that will mess you up. But So low histamine foods. And then also the environment can make your body produce histamines. So you want something to counter that. And it can be histamine intolerant as well. Yes. And it's usually people with poor gut function and low DAO level. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we measure these things. We don't guess. We test. And that's one of our standard five labs. You know, it includes, by the way, zonulin, that same finger stick, zonulin, which tells us if you have leaky gut or not. And most yeah. people do, don't they, Reid? Most people do. Well, a lot of sick people do. I, I, I've heard it said, not to cut you off, Johan, but um, people, a lot of people say all disease begins in the gut. No, that's not true, but it certainly circles around to the gut in a lot of people, maybe even most. But whether it started there or not, I'm not going to say. Yeah, but, and uh, I love, I, 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 yeah. the microbiome even, you know, it, it, it makes our vitamins for us. Uh, most of our immune system is in the gut. So, you know, it makes serotonin, it makes melatonin, all these microbes. So like we really, one thing I always tell people is to take kefir, kefir, um, the uh, the raw kefir, really, really good. And it helps people to sleep as well at nighttime. You know, you can take a half a cup full of kefir and um, really go for the microbiome and it really helps to calm down the nerves. It does so much to kefir. It's just one, it's like a pair of superfood, whatever. But the gut is so important to, um, look after on so many levels you know for so many reasons but you know our brain health our neurotransmitters it all it all works together Reed. Um, Reed, I, I want to ask you one other question then I want to ask you about your your program that you do Um, do you do lab tests on um so so I'm the sleep coach and you know um I talk a lot about your cortisol levels and your melatonin levels in relation to the circadian um cycle so obviously our cortisol is naturally highest in the morning so we need to be taking those maybe at various different points during the day uh, to, to see our different levels during the day is that something you do as i read yeah absolutely so the first letter h in our hidden stressors it, it stands for hormones it's not just the sex hormones people think of estrogen and progesterone and mm. testosterone it is the cortisol and dhea so DHA won't even tell you dehydroepiandosterone. So <laughs> I want to know that <laughs> dehydroepiandosterone. Remember that. So DHA. So so the cortisol is your catabolic hormone. It breaks the body down. Its job is maybe mainly to keep your blood sugar levels uh, up where they should be for that time. Mm -hmm. And so in the morning you need it to get up out of bed and get on your feet on the ground and get going. So cortisol is higher in the morning usually. And then it drops down during the day mm -hmm. as part of the natural circadian rhythm for people. We are called diurnal animals. We're not nocturnal animals. We're diurnal, meaning we're supposed to get up with the sun, mm -hmm. bed with darkness. And just like my dad said, early to bed, early to rise, <laughs> work like hell and advertise. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> no, you know, we're in better rise, makes them healthy, wealthy, and wise. So, so you know, there's something about that old mother wit, you know. That's how we're designed. Now, your cortisol would follow a natural pattern, and so would your melatonin, which is another hormone included in this saliva test that we do. Mm. So, yes, we do hormone testing, the big H, and we do the cortisol, the DHA. They, they, they balance each other out. As I said, cortisol is the catabolic, breaks your body down for blood sugar levels. But DHA counteracts it. That's your anabolic hormone. One's catabolic, one's anabolic. It's you have to have balance. Your yeah. body's supposed to break down, but it's supposed to be built right back. That's the balance. Yeah. And people are way out of balance. Their they're, they're cortisol, because they're in stress and all these things. It, Causing it, it, weight gain as well, which a lot of people are suffering from weight gain. All kinds of things. And mm -hmm. and the sex horm hormone imbalances come from the same way. It's, and it also slows down your immune system. It it ruins the melatonin part of the circadian rhythm and on and on. So you end up with a weakened immune system. You said the gut's 80% of that. And so guess what happens? Dysbiosis. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're not digesting properly. And from that, you get all kinds of nutritional problems. And then you end up with bigger bugs coming along. 
and they yeah. cause the leaky gut. Now you've got liver congestion, possible autoimmune uh, implications, and lots of things. So oh, it really begins with stress. You really have yeah. to be a detective, don't you, Reed, for all this? Yes. <laughs> I can really, I can really see. And I can see why you love all this, Reed, and you really know your stuff. I want to ask you about your course. Can you tell us about your, your certification course? Because that, that, you've so many people enrolled in that. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's the course on how to be that health detective. It is the health detective course because we're not interested in the simple diagnosis. We know that when physicians give a diagnosis, that's just how their model works. Mm. And if you get a diagnosis, let's say low thyroid, well, you're probably going to just worry about those thyroid levels and taking your medicines and getting the paper back in shape. Well, all the other things you need to also be concerned with are forgotten about. And so that's why people have these continuous degenerative conditions and the drugs aren't helping. And yeah. um, so what, what's the opposite? Let's do the entire dress program and build yourself up. I teach both aspects, all the hidden stressors, how to test for the hormone, immune digestion, detoxification, and so on, the anatomy, the physiology, the biochemistry. And I try to keep the words in um, kind of at a ninth or 10th grade level we call it grade nine or 10. Yeah. And uh, even though it's advanced, it's PhD work, but the way I teach it, remember I spent 10 years in the office as the patient educator. So I had Mr. Jones and Mrs. Smith in front of me and you just can't talk over their heads. Yeah. So I learned how to explain the results of the lab tests in easy phrase terminology. I love it. Not only that, but I also over the 10 years, had people understanding that it's not what you do in the office that matters. It's what you do between visits that matters. Yes. So I came up with that at home, self-directed, self-empowering, putting you back in control of your own health, the D-R-E-S-S. -S. Oh, so okay. both, they're part in major parts, taught in major sections of this program. What I learned in 10 years, I can teach you in 10 months or less. So right. it's self-directed. You can take the course in four months if you have the time. Um, a lot of people got sent home during the COVID times uh, from work. And a lot of them took my course. They said, oh, I, I want to improve myself. I want to learn. And also work on themselves and lower their risk for disease. So in my course, it's all that H-I-D-D-N, the science of it, everything you need to know in a way you can understand. And a plus... I enjoy teaching, so it comes across as a lot of fun, and we've formed quite a community of the graduates, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show here. So, And then all of the protocols, which is the lifestyle things and how to teach that. The third part of the program is doing it on yourself first. That way, just signing up and working on yourself is worth the price of admission. But there's another part that is how to do it as for a living, how to do it as an entrepreneur in the health space. So mm -hmm. you can become a health coach practitioner. That's, and that's, that's what, yeah. health coach practitioner. And that's what's missing in a lot of programs is is the business side about how to how to do it as a business. Well, you know, I had a very successful health coach practitioner business within this wellness center. Uh, it just evolved. I, I didn't design it that way it's just what happened i started yeah. being able to be one of the providers there instead of just adjunctive you know i became yeah. one of the main featured people because of the labs and the protocols and so um i finally broke away and then i started teaching i love um i love that the the community aspect that you have because i think support is very important and then you can throw in questions you know um if, if you're concerned about something or you know like having that group um to to reflect on as well and i think that's a really really important thing and you know the community i have is so is so big and um wow. it's, done, it's done is it done online read yeah no i'm just looking for a place where we could uh send your listeners to to listen they could actually go to um fdntraining.com slash family health so fdn okay, is, is that's what we do functional diagnostic nutrition but we, we, we just call it fdntraining.com okay. slash family health. 
So if people just want to know more, go there. Um, it's it's just going to explain everything to you, what the program is like, what it's all about. Um, even how you could maybe just hire one if you want. But you could put that in your show notes. And, yeah, and absolutely. Because I was going to say, Reid, a lot of people do these programs, you know, for themselves or for a loved one, you know, but if they're not getting any answers, you know, from the medical community. Um, so look, Reid, we're coming to the end. We've actually come to the end a while ago, but I've just been so intrigued in in here and um everything we're just we're getting started what do you mean yeah 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 we we have to get you back again Reed. there's just so much i mean we could just talk about this there is so much that we can share with people to really help them be empowered and i love you know i think um i would encourage people to get their labs done you know even if they don't have any get them done every couple of years maybe or something you know just to see where you're at especially if you're a woman going through menopause, maybe, for example, the hormones are always changing around that time. That's a really, and a lot of people are not sleeping around that time. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely, you know, because it can take 10 years, 15 years for diseases to develop into cancer. And as low as people would know, I've, I think everybody knows somebody who's suffered with cancer and it takes a long time for this to develop. So why not do these tests? It, it makes sense to, to do these labs and find out for yourself where you're at and, 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 and have that qualification to do it for your um, patients or, you know, to be able to refer people to functional medicine labs as opposed to just, you know, from the doctors. They don't even do a full uh panels you know like the thyroid the adrenals you know they often get very confused and um I, I think it's just really important that we know before we're actually at the point of being sick yes in, in fairness to the physicians you know um if you need to put your ladder on that wall go ahead you know because you, you might have to climb out of a hole where only medicine can get you exactly somewhere but if you're just in a downward spiral from lifestyle and the doctor's saying I can't, you're, you got your ladder on the wrong wall you want to come over into our sandbox and play there you know where where we're actually going to teach you how to look for the healing opportunities yeah absolutely. and then what, how to heal those things we're going to get you back in control of your health yeah, give them power and, and to know what works for you because it's different we're all bio individuals and you know it works different you know we have some foods could be great for some people and it could be, the same food could be poison for somebody else. So we need to know what works for us as well on an individual level. And, you know, really just to have that empowerment to, to, to know what works for us. And we want to have a good quality of life. We want to live long and die quick, as they say as well. So we don't want to be in pain yeah. for the last 10 years of our lives, you know. So that's what this is all about, really, you know. So, Reid, is there any last, um, you've given out your web address there and I have some other um, web addresses here on your social media. So I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Is there any last impairing thought that you'd like to leave with our listeners before we sign off? Yes, and thank you. It's not just about the labs and behavior. It's a lot about how you look at the world, you know, and uh, I can tell you a person who sees the cup is half full at least, right? And so if you're a cup half empty person and always uh, negative in things, that might be where you want to start, you know, can you get a Better, better attitude. My uh, good friend Ben Azadi. He, he's uh, he's also make a good guest for you, Ben Azadi. I'll refer him to you. Right. Um, he, he's a graduate of my program and has gone on to uh, be very successful. And he calls it vitamin G <laughs> gratitude. Love it. Yes. Get up in the morning and take your vitamin C. Be there's something you got up, if nothing else, you know, and a lot of people didn't. A that's, million, a million people die every day, something like that. That's so part of my morning you, routine. Gratitude. Yeah, thank God that you're not one of them, and you've got an opportunity to have a new day and do something useful, yes. productive, or helpful. Yes, absolutely. I love it, Reed. Listen, Reed, this has been incredible you've given us so much information knowledge and wisdom uh, a lot to think about you know um both on a physical sense on a spiritual sense it all matters it really does and i love that you ended on gratitude and your attitude as well because that can really um you talk about ep epigenetics and you know how it can influence us and all that can influence our body so reed thank you so so much we'll have you back again and listen okay. have a great day thank you take care okay
I do hope you are enjoying these conversations and to help me continue pushing these videos and audio podcasts together, I do have an ask. I do need support to help me to keep bringing you knowledge and insights. There is a Patreon link, patreon.com forward slash empowering family health, or you can make a donation via PayPal. All the links are in the description and the pinned comment. You can do a one-off or you can do a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Take care.